one architecture, Java, connecting everyone to everything. Okay, now we're just going to have a quick look at Entity Java Beans. An Entity Java Bean is really made up of a Pojo and some annotation. Pojo is just a plain old Java object. Uh, with getters and setters, just like any bean. Annotations are things written with at signs, as you can see, and they give clues to the compiler of how to make this entity Java bean. So why use eGBA3? Well, it's easy to use with annotations now. It integrates really well with the solution stack, which means, you know, calling other Java Things like JNI and other areas are integrated quite well. It's an open J Java EE standard, uh, and it has a lot of people participating in this, people from Java and people from the industry. And this gives way to stable and high-quality code because it's based off of previous versions of EJB, which have been proven and have been used in commercial products. It also has built into it, because of that, clustering, load balance, and things like failover, as, many, as well as many other things, which make it a great choice. So there are really three types of EJB. Um, there's things called session beans, message-driven beans, and entity beans. And we'll talk about all three of these as the slides go on. Session beans, to summarize, usually contain business logic. So let's say if you want to buy something from an online store, that might be done through a session bean. You know, the request is made through the front end, but it goes through the session bean. And a session bean will have a plain old Java interface, as well as a plain old Java object. And there can be stateful session beans and stateless. Stateless just means that you can call it without really any previous data. And a stateful means that each user on the internet has their own session bean, so it keeps track of what's going on, I guess. And really, that's where you can do a lot of business logic, and session beans are quite an amazing tool for that. So a really simple example, we have this interface hello, and hello world implements hello, and it calls the uh, method and just writes hello in the name. The only thing different is this at stateless annotation, which says that this is a stateless uh, message bean for the compiler. If it was stateful, there would be, each user would have to have a specific hello world for each one. Stateless, since anyone can use it, there's no previous information required, one bean could theoretically be used for hundreds of users which makes it the good choice in this situation. Now to call this, it's not so hard. All you have to do is at EJB annotation, and it'll inject this hello world, and all you have to do is just write hello B dot and call it like you would a regular method. So message-driven beans are usually used to pass on messages, and there's a few types, point to point, publish, subscribe, and request reply. Point to point is just message from person to person almost. Publish, subscribe is you publish a message and lots of people can read it, lots of methods can read it. Request reply is like point to point, but there's a reply. Now message driven is a little more complicated, it's really hard to summarize shortly, so I'm just gonna leave it at that and we'll come back to it hopefully at a later time. If, uh, if you're familiar with databases, entity Java beans will be a little bit easier. And they just are a layer to help you persist a plain old Java object to a database. And uh, at entity helps you tell you that it's an entity Java bean. At ID helps you tell you that the variable is going to be used to store the ID. And these one-to-one, many-to-many, one-to-many relationships help you tell the compiler how this Java object really reacts in the database world. You can tell the table, the column, how to, how to get the data, like a join column, that's how you get the variable. And these kinds of things help the compiler and, and the stack to be able to, to relate the objects to the database world. Now just an example, so we have this entity and it's from a table named user and it implements serializable so it can be stored and brought back if need be. It has an ID which is named ID and that's a long and the variable name has a column named name, and it'll automatically can be converted to a string. And of course, with any Java beans, you can save them and load them, and hopefully we'll be able to talk about that in the future. But that should be a good summary for now, to get the idea of it at least. Now, beans in general have lifecycle callbacks. So after a session bean is created, you can have this at post construct, which will force the system to call this method called init once it makes the session-driven bean. 
Now this might be useful if you want to make a database connection, you can just do it in init and it'll forcefully be called because of the annotation. You can destroy it in destroy. Thanks for watching and I tried to summarize as much as I could in five minutes. What will be possible tomorrow? You decide.